Career Conversations on Nurse One. I'm Mary Wheeler. This is the second in a series of interviews with nurses who are expanding their careers beyond the traditional role of nursing. Today, I'd like to introduce Kathy Crow, well known in Ontario and Canada as an advocate for the homeless and the poor. We have a wonderful opportunity today for her to tell her career story. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Could we start with just you letting us know what you're currently doing? Well, I, I mean, I call myself a street nurse, and my whole focus of my work is on homeless health care issues, and I've been doing that for a long time, but I've, I've transitioned quite a bit from the actual kind of clinical setting where I would be doing a clinic in a drop-in center, seeing homeless people and treating health issues. It still comes up a little bit, but I'm working more like around the issues. So that ranges from dealing with emergencies as they pop up. For example, very recently the fire marshal reported there was a homeless person that burned to death in a squat in an abandoned Mm -hmm. building to, you know, a huge issue that's been in the media quite a bit lately that we started working on a long time ago, which is like just the expansion of bed bugs through shelters and into rooming houses and housing. And then jumping from those kind of local issues, working really, I guess, on what I call the cure, the solution, which is housing. So I do a lot of advocacy work, working in coalition with other nurses and non-nurses. So you're a street nurse, you're working more on advocacy issues. You currently also have a fellowship, the Atkinson Economic Justice Award. Yeah, I'm on a fellowship, which essentially means that I'm provided with the security of funding and also an additional bit of money that I can use for specific projects and work on just to achieve the goals that that I'm, I'm working on. And they have given me free range in that area. So I've just continued to work on the local issues, kind of the emergencies, the hot spots, I call them, which range from TB to um, the high number of deaths and really inadequate shelter conditions. And then I work more upstream at the provincial and federal level, trying to bring in uh, more funding for a national housing program. So it's been great. They gave me uh, this gave me the opportunity to do uh, you know a book, for example. I was able to complete a book during my fellowship, and I'm working on a couple of movies now. Kind of multitasking. I know it's not a good thing to say, but kind of working on a whole bunch of different areas in different ways. So I'm interested, Kathy. How did you get to where you are today? I mean, where did your career in nursing begin? And you've been in nursing for a while. So how did you get to this point in your career yeah. doing this work? Yeah, I've been a nurse 35 years. I just got my uh, photograph from her reunion. Um, (laughs) So, I mean, I started in the hospital, as is very, very common, right? I I worked in cardiology and had a child, and having a child kind of made it really hard for me to being able to do shifts, and so I didn't. And I moved to a community where I worked in uh, family practice and executive medical practice, which I hated. Um, It was very corporate. That was when physicians were able to build extra Mm -hmm. above health insurance. And Mm -hmm. so just kind of one thing led to another, and I was fed up with that, and I just literally saw an ad in the newspaper for a community health center job, and that was in South Riverdale in downtown Toronto. Worked as a nurse there with wonderful, wonderful progressive people like Michael Rackliff, Phil Berger. Um, Those are physicians Mm -hmm. that have really made a name for themselves and nurses, nurse practitioners like Carolyn Davies and really saw this amazing opportunity to work in the community. I went back to school because I wanted to be able to work as a nurse practitioner. Got back out of school and really quickly, I think, really found that I was stymied in terms of what I could do by the kind of clinical setting I was in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I worked at various community health centers all in downtown Toronto, all very much surrounded by poverty. So really just, you know, rooming houses and the inner city and working with children in Regent Park and just a whole range of things. And then it was just a sheer accident, really, that led me to a place called Street Health, which was and still is really a primarily a nursing-based organization that provides health care to homeless people. So I didn't seek it out. It was just there. And what I was drawn to was the fact that it was nursing-based, uh, I thought I'd be bored. I thought I'd only see old men with feet and leg problems and homelessness. I didn't know much about it, and it certainly wasn't the way I was planning to go in my career. 
Mm -hmm. But I was so excited by the fact that it was a nursing-based organization. There were not physicians or hospital protocols that we had to follow, (laughs) be directed by. It was nursing-based, and that was just, I don't know, I was just at the right time, at the right place. And then it all unfolded really after that. That was 19 years ago. Certainly it's never been dull. It's always (laughs) challenging. And I think it could have happened to anybody, to tell you the truth. (laughs) Really? Do you think so? Well, I, I... Yeah, I do in a way. I mean, when I tell people about my life and my background, it's not like there was some major remarkable thing that happened. I didn't come from a a family that where everyone spent all their time working on social justice issues. Right, right. I came from Kingston, middle class, community, very unremarkable childhood. Because I meet families now and people now where people have come from all around the world and have had really quite influential experiences, I think, that will carve their life for them in the future. And I don't really, I just think it was, um, it was there, and I think it was a small, little small agency, and uh, very enticing, a wonderful working atmosphere, Mm -hmm. and it just, it happened. (laughs) I mean, I... So really, so it's like street health was the springboard to what you're doing now. Is that what you're... Definitely, yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, there were other aspects of my life not really so directly related to nursing that made me interested in advocacy or speaking out. And strangely enough, um, I'm kind of coming full circle back to that. And and that was my my involvement just as a young mother, actually, in the uh, post-Cold War period, during the nuclear period, (laughs) where we Mm -hmm. were so concerned about you know, nuclear transport of materials or nuclear war, and that was the period when Helen Caldicott, the pediatrician, uh, was doing her speeches and her tour around the world, and people in Canada were developing a lot of expertise in that. We were, it was a scary, scary time. Mm -hmm. And just like, ironically, actually, kind of coming back to that in terms of work I'm doing right now around trying to build a campaign, this might sound really strange, but trying to build a campaign against our war in Afghanistan so that we can just begin the discussion around how federal money should be going to programs like child care and how mm. this is, you know, the newspapers are full of how our cities are crumbling, the extent of child poverty in the country, mm-hmm. the extent of poverty period, and people are now beginning to realize that we're being left. I mean, communities are being left behind, the debate between the mayors. and Anyway, so it's just kind of ironic that it's kind of come full circle. But it was in those early years, actually, in the 80s, when that was when I was learning how to, like, write a press release or how to um, research areas that weren't what one would see as traditionally nursing. Mm -hmm. And that was driven by a passion, for sure, that was very much inspired, actually, by Helen Caldicott, by my hearing her and seeing her and seeing her film. And it has a lot to do with what I ended up doing as a street nurse, actually, even though it was about nuclear issues. What I'm hearing when you're telling your story is that you are passionate about social justice issues. And it sounds like sometimes there are not, there's a small group of you that keep pushing forward. What gets in your way? Why do you think this message hasn't gone beyond what you've seen happen so far in your work? Oh, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because we're really in a very hard place right now in terms of the small groups and organizations that I'm working with trying to do stuff with. One is I'm actually more and more astonished at how little, I guess what you'd call political literacy, politics Mm. is taught in school. Mm. And by that, I don't. I I just mean like really basic, basic things. What's is the city council level of government responsible mm-hmm. for? Who's your member of parliament? What does an ass, what does an assistant deputy minister do or not do? Like, how, what do you do if you're worried about an issue? How do you do it then? And really, really basic stuff. I think like world affairs are still not being taught. I think actually right now most Canadians, for example, don't know we're at war. You know, I think yeah. people are still under this naive impression that we're involved in um, in just aid, for example, in Afghanistan. And, but if you read the papers and hear the speeches, people don't deny we're at war. It's there. And so I just think we've been kind of numbed, numbed out in, in our country. I was talking to a, a young nursing student actually the other day who is from Peru, 
and who described to me how when she went back home to visit recently, the difference to her was remarkable because young people there out out for a drink in a pub would be like talking politics passionately. Mm -hmm. And here Mm -hmm. she sees that that we don't and that most people don't. So they're not engaged. And then we have like a 50% voter turnout. So that's one whole area. And I guess, you know, another major area, and it's actually been covered recently in the media as well, is the lack of giving, the lack of Mm. charitable donations that Mm. go towards this kind of what I call upstream work. So we have tons of donations going to the United Way and tons of donations Mm -hmm. going to food banks and things that help organizations and people and definitely save lives Mm -hmm. but don't change the systems that are causing people to have to go to drop-in centers or rely on food banks. So people got in Ontario since the um, Mike Harris years, even the word advocacy became like a dirty word became mm-hmm. a bad word, it became a bad thing to do, even though, you know, nurses will know that, you know, being an advocate for your patient or advocacy is something nurses have all, like it's part of what we what we do. You know, I have a nurse mm-hmm. friend who was involved in early years and years ago discovering that lead was in kettles and, and that was very bad for women that were making formula and had an effect on babies. So she did advocacy to solve that. There's mm-hmm. tons of simple examples like that. And I think it's been diminished in a, in a very tragic way. Well, even when you talk about what is missing, the political literacy or the lack of charitable donations to, I love that, the upstream work. Would you transfer that over also, or do you have any comment for nursing programs, how we need to prepare nurses for a world where these issues are not, these social justice issues are going to get bigger rather than Uh, smaller. Yeah. Well, you know, I had this great experience last week where a whole bunch of class uh, years of nursing students all came together at a community college, and I gave a talk to all of them. And -hmm. before I started, I, I, um, I divided up the section of the Toronto Star, and I asked for volunteers, and I gave a section to each nursing student, like in a small group. What I asked them to do was to circle or highlight any article that had anything to do with what I was going to be talking about that day. And then at the end of my talk, it was really great because this one nursing student put up his hand and he stood up in front of the class and he said, well, I found something on every page. And I thought, well, that was remarkable because I hadn't even, you know. And what he was pointing out was there was an article about Iraq and then there was an article about child poverty and then there was an article about some aspect of racism, I forget Mm -hmm. what the example was, and something else. And it was fabulous because what he was doing was he was tying it all to nursing. But Mm -hmm. that is the exception. That's the exception. That's the exception. What I have found, and I really can't quite get my head around it yet in terms of what to do, is that I go into all kinds of different uh, nursing classes, but also the other uh, health, social sciences and health courses, Mm. even ones where the actual course title I'm going in is called Social Determinants of Health or Health Mm -hmm. and Poverty, something like that. And what I find, and I think it's really a reflection on, on on the, the teachers, I hate to say this, but what I find is that um, people have not even been taught those basic things. Um, what's welfare, what's Ontario disability, what's the difference, mm-hmm. what are the barriers to people obtaining it, what's causing hunger, how much does, some, how much does a single mom on welfare with three children get, so then approximately then what, how is she going to find a place to, to rent and what are rents and which ministry is in charge of such and such, and it's not being taught. No. It's just, and, and that's the problem. So, Kathy, I'm looking at our time, and I want to get a couple of more questions in, just more focused on you. You talked about you just published a book this year, and I had an opportunity to look at that book and read it and have been passing it around. And you also then are involved in doing some producing of a couple of movies. Mm -hmm. What does the future hold for you? Well, for the next year, I'm going to try to prioritize some of the work on the films. Uh, mm-hmm. one, one film, which I'm making with a very experienced filmmaker, I'm going to use that as a, as like a mentorship where I'm learning and almost apprenticing, if you will, so that mm-hmm. then after that I can carry on with uh, the other film. I'm right at the core of launching a massive national campaign right now on housing, and what happens with that, I'm finding that that's where I want to be. 
practice moving something forward and in, involving and connecting with people and, and dr- figuring out how to, how to draw people in. And then I'm stuck. I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. Well, those are big projects. They're, they're huge projects, and it'll take time, and mm-hmm. it'll take money. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm on a learning curve now around how to fundraise. I guess with this podcast, there's a wonderful opportunity of a reach. This is heard on Nurse One, which is the Canadian Nurses Association portal. If there's someone listening to this podcast, how could they get in touch with you if this is something they'd like to be able to support either in time or financially? Well, that would be wonderful. To be honest, if they just Google Google my name, Kathy oh. Lee Crow, C-R-O-W-E, um, it, it appears that it comes up quite prominently, and then you can connect to me. I do have a, a website, and it my web page is hosted on the Toronto Disaster Relief Committee site. So mm-hmm. that's www.tdrc.net. Um, I produce some monthly electronic newsletter that I, I really get great feedback on. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's always different. It's always varied. It has everything from film reviews to guest articles. It covers um, the issues of homelessness in the broadest, broadest way. But mostly I need nurses' help right now on this new campaign that's called Housing Not War. And I'm reminded, you know, the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion identifies peace as the number one prerequisite. So that's Mm -hmm. the nursing connection. So I'm hoping people will help out on that. And uh, yeah, and I'm I'm emailing all the time, so I'll certainly get back to people. And my book, okay. Dying for a Home, you know, is um, I think people would find it really helpful. It gives yes. really, it, it tells kind of the story from beginning to end for me in terms of how I yeah. get into this work. It's an excellent book, and what people can do. So, well, in closing, I wanted to thank you so much for doing this interview. I know you were down at City Hall this morning. Uh, we Just before going online for the podcast, you were telling me a bit about how you were at City Hall, again, advocating for the homeless. So on behalf of nursing, nursing across Canada, nursing internationally, I just wanted to say thank you because uh, I think nurses who are doing unique and different work from the away from the traditional are the ones that are leading the charge. So Thank you so much, and we will. We, I'm sure we'll be back in touch. It's been an inspiring story. Great. Thanks. Thank Thanks you, Kathy. So okay. Bye-bye. This has been a career conversation with Kathy Crow, a street nurse and an advocate for the homeless. Next month, we will speak to a nurse entrepreneur. Stay tuned to Career Conversations on Nurse One 